Welcome back to How To Craft Fair. This is the 32nd episode in the Craft Fair Booth Review Series, where I take a look at a real Craft Fair booth submitted by a channel member, and I'm going to review the booth using 10 different segments and criteria. Along the way, I'll point out things that the vendor is doing well and should continue to do, and then also offer up some ideas for improvement. During the video, keep your craft for booth in mind so that you can apply these tips in order to take your booth to the next level. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, and so for today's booth review, we're going to be taking a look at Todd and Michelle's booth, and their business name is TNM 3D Printing. They do 3D printed, articulated figures, statues, and other items. So there's a pretty wide variety at the booth. We're going to see a lot of different shapes, uh, many different colors, very vibrant colors at the booth. So that's going to be pretty interesting to look at. They're based out of Indiana, and typically they have a busy booth at events, which is good because they tend to sign up for shows where they're the only vendor featuring 3D printed items. So that's a strategy that a lot of vendors can try to incorporate in their events is communicating with the organizer and seeing what types of vendors are already signed up for a show and trying to limit the competition at the event. Okay, so that's just one thing to keep in mind as a vendor. So they do run an Etsy shop and they also have a Facebook page. Okay, so I'll have links below in the description for both of those. Please check them out and give them a follow and all that and uh, try to support where you can. So without further ado, let's go ahead and look at our first segment. All right, here is the front of the booth. Now they went with kind of like an inverted U shape. Okay, so there's a table on each side and then a main table in the front. Okay, so we're gonna be looking at three different angles. This is the front view. Really quick, I'll show you the left side of the booth right here. All right, and then we have the right side of the booth over here. We'll back up to the front angle, and the first thing that we're gonna talk about is displays. So when it comes to displays at the booth, the main thing that's being incorporated here are the wooden crates. There are, are also some various displays mixed in, so on the right side here, you'll see a little bit of kind of like a tree thing going on with essentially three levels because you can have something underneath it, something on this middle level, and then something up top, okay? So they're making good use over here. Then when we look at the crates, there's good utilization. I like the placement of the crates because the fact that they put one on its side and then they have another one kind of standing up more vertically on top of it, that enables them to put a product on top of the first wooden crate, okay? So that's a nice configuration where not only does it look visually interesting, but it's also serving a purpose of being able to hold that additional product. So again, you have products within the crates on multiple shelves and then on top of the various crates, okay? So great job there utilizing those displays. When we look at the other tables, we have a little bit more going on as far as the displays, okay? So we have kind of like this wire basket and then above it is just like this wooden stand, okay? So again, sort of like a multi-level platform type of display where you can put things, you know, kind of in it and on top of it. So really nice usage there. Mixed in, on the tables itself, we have kind of collection trays, okay? So it's keeping these smaller items together and that's enabling you to, for example, price them in a way where it's contained, okay? And the pricing of things outside of that container are likely different. So that's really, really good usage of a display to kind of control that area and keep it its own separate little zone so that you can have these smaller items marked as a separate price from other things around it. So great, great job there. Let's take a look at the right side of the booth. And then finally we have a little bit of a different display. Now we have sort of just like a single riser, okay? But great design again in that you're able to utilize the space that's underneath it, okay? So if you just had kind of like a straight board here facing outwards and then the top, well then of course you couldn't utilize any of this space underneath it, okay? So 
you've done a good job with your displays to be really smart in not only the placement of them at your booth, but making sure that you're getting basically multi-purpose usage out of them. Okay. It's not just, you know, serving like the top tier or just, you know, kind of the bottom tier. You're able to get a lot of usage out of the one display. So really hats off there. I think your displays are really, really nice and they're fitting with the vibe. Okay. So, um, they're not, they don't feel like out of place or anything like that. So I like that about the displays. And again, just the usage, you can't beat it. Very, very good. The one thing I would suggest though, is something on this front table, maybe like what you got going on on the right side, what we just looked at. Okay. So for example, this one, maybe you could do something similar on the front table, because if any part of the booth feels, I don't want to say lacking, but maybe it's not hitting quite as hard as the other sections of the booth. It's probably this area right here. Okay. Where it could just use a little bit of help to make it a little bit more interesting, but that's all I got to say about the displays. You're doing a fantastic job with them right off the bat, starting off strong with displays. All right, so let's roll into pricing. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit on this first picture here. And this sign, it says, no tag, look on the bottom, please. Okay, so as we look around, we can see these white tags. So here's one right here, here, here. They're mixed in, okay? And a lot of the tags are placed on larger items. However, you know, if there's not a tag, well, then it's letting you know that, okay, just flip it over, look for the sticker on the bottom or, you know, something on the bottom that'll let you know what the price is. So very good job putting clarity on your pricing. There's another sign right here that says no tag prices on the bottom. Please look. Okay. So not only are you providing the instruction, but you're doing it in multiple areas of the booth, which is really important. Okay. So the bigger the booth is, it's just, people are obviously only standing in one spot in one time. Okay. And they might only come to one spot of the booth. So don't assume that when a shopper comes to your booth, that they're going to tour the entire thing, every square foot of your booth. Sometimes they might only kind of step up into a certain section of the booth. So if you have something that requires like special instruction, like for instance, you know, a little bit of guidance on the pricing it's a good idea to place that in multiple locations at the booth just so that, you know, you're kind of covering all areas and no matter where somebody approaches your booth from, again, you've kind of got that part covered. So great job with that. I wanted to point that out during the review that this was really, really nice to see. And again, as we look at the left side of the booth over here, we have a couple of different uh, items where they're marked in a localized manner. Okay, so these small animals are $3 each or two for five. So again, we touched on that, how it's like localized pricing, okay? So we see it over here with the pencil toppers and the fidgets. So nice job of covering all the bases. Here's another tag for this item right here. So between the tags, between the markings on the bottom of the items and between these separate individual areas, you're doing a really, really nice job with your pricing. So again, just want to say hats off to you. We're off to a great start on the first two categories. And one more thing before we move on, I want to touch on is that there's a wide price point range, and that's very, very important to have at a successful booth at a craft fair. That's something that, in my opinion, every craft fair vendor should be offering is a wide price range because you never know what somebody's budget is and you don't want to exclude shoppers simply because you only have high priced items or you only have very, very low priced items. So either way, you don't want to miss out on possible sales. So it's a good idea to have, you know, what I refer to basically as three price points. You want to have low priced items, something in the middle, you know, kind of that mid range. And then you do want to have some high priced items because you don't know who's coming through and even though, you know, you might think, ah, this is kind of a shot in the dark. I don't know if it's going to work, you know, and I don't know if I should invest space at my booth for it. Do it. You never know. And that could be the difference between, you know, having an average day and having a really, really successful day. So put it all out there. Make sure that you're covering all budgets. 
And we see this at the booth. Again, that left side of the booth, we saw kind of the lower priced items with the fidget spinners and the small animals. In the center here, we have a little bit of your mid range to high. And then on the right side of the booth, this is where we saw kind of the bigger items. All right. So we see items that are like $20 a piece and possibly even upwards, there might be a 25 mixed in there. But this is where you're seeing those, you know, you're taking, you're taking bigger chances and you're hoping for those bigger sales and it, it will pay off by having that small, medium and high priced approach. So great job with that. All right, so now we're gonna roll into signage. So we have touched on some of the pricing signage already. So we'll discuss everything else that's left at the booth. Now, the first thing that stands out here is this Flexi Factory sign, authorized seller. So this is establishing credibility. This is something that I've talked about a little bit on the channel more and more with our Q&A series and even other booth reviews where you always want to try to establish credibility as a vendor. So whatever way that you can do that in your own space, start introducing that and think of how you can introduce that at your booth. Okay. Because the more credible that you appear in your field, okay, whatever you're creating, it doesn't matter. The more likely shoppers are going to not only trust you as a creator, but trust your products. All right. Trust what you're creating and believe in it. And, get excited about it. Okay. So it's always a good idea to reinforce that credibility at a booth. And this is something that's definitely serving that purpose. Now, one thing I noticed at the booth that I wanted to talk about when it comes to signage is that it would be nice to see some kind of a sign that shows your accepted payment methods and also one for your Etsy shop. Okay. So you're trying to generate sales on Etsy between events and maybe in your off season when craft fairs aren't so common in your area. Generally, everybody has some kind of an off season. This is a good idea to promote at your show to try to help fill in those gaps in between craft fairs and during your off season to try to keep things rolling for your business and um, you know bring some extra bucks in. So that's something that you can do with signage at your booth is to have something that goes to your Etsy. A lot of vendors will utilize a QR code that just links right to your Etsy shop. So you can create this on Canva. There's a couple different places that you can, you know, create QR codes for free where it just links to whatever you assign it to. So just something to think about and then possibly introduce to the booth to help establish that online presence, because that's one of the things that we talked about leading up to this booth review was that Todd kind of felt like they don't have too strong of a social or online presence yet. And that's a great way to do it. So utilize the in-person events to kind of pump up the traffic online and on your socials. And with that being said, we're going to roll into marketing because we do have a little bit more signage to discuss, but it's going to be more on the marketing side. So the first thing that I noticed here, we're going to zoom in a little bit on the bottom left. And it says, take one, please. And it has TNM 3D printing. And these are essentially their business cards, okay? So this is kind of a cool way to present it. It's a little bit different than just like a standard business card holder, right? Where sometimes you just kind of see it as like a little stand and you know, you just take one. This is different, you know, a little bit of a picture frame and it's, it's unique. It does require a little bit of a real estate sacrifice at the booth. And for example, you know, there's a product that's sort of behind it. Okay. So again, a little bit of a sacrifice there, but with the volume of crafts that you have out there, I think it's okay. You know, I think it's okay to, to do that. Now, if you had just like a six foot table, then, mm, you know, maybe we'd go with just like the, the plain stand to save that precious real estate. But since you have such a big booth, again, not a big deal. And then we see one over on this side of the front table. Okay. So we basically have the two corners here on the left side and then here on the right side. So just like we talked about with the pricing signage, it's nice to have that in multiple locations because you don't know where the shoppers are approaching from, you know, which side they're approaching from. And if there's a shopper standing here and another shopper approaches, well then, you know, the first shopper is kind of blocking the sign. So it's nice to have that alternative there just again, so you have all those bases covered. So good thinking and putting these elements 
in various locations at the booth. Okay, more than once. It's nice to see that. So that's just that this is an example of the vendor thinking ahead and thinking like a shopper. Okay, that's really, really important to success as a vendor is to try to approach the booth like you would as a shopper if you were going through a craft fair. You know, what obstacles might you you find? And again, like we mentioned with, you know, one customer standing in a certain section and something is blocked off, are you able to still convey the information you want to if somebody is standing in a certain spot? So that's one way of thinking like a shopper that's going to help you as a vendor. So Todd and Michelle, great job doing this as a vendor. Love to see it. So as we dive a little bit deeper into marketing, we did talk about trying to promote the Etsy shop. That's one way that you could do that. But another thing that I would have you consider is getting a table runner. Okay, so maybe about um, two, two and a half feet wide. So maybe like 24 to 30 inches wide. You can have a table runner coming down the front of the main table here okay so like your central focal table have one coming down and then put your business logo or even just your business name if you don't have a logo that's fine you know your business name and then what you do okay so tnm 3d printing great that'll work just something to establish that branding at the booth to get people to remember you by okay so you've done a lot of great work to set up what i would say is a very attractive booth i mean Again, the displays are top-notch. The way that you've set them up is very, very intelligent. And you've got a wide variety of items that showcase really well. They're they're very appealing and bright and kind of magnetizing. They kind of pull you in, you know? So you've done a lot of legwork on the setup, but I think where when it comes to promoting your branding, that's where the opportunity is with you guys. I think that's kind of like going to be our focus during this review. So keep that in mind. The table runner would be great. The sign for the Etsy would be great. Just those little elements to now start pushing the branding, not only at the show, but again, to help people remember you between the shows and during your off season. All right, now let's talk about vertical space. So vertical space at the booth is definitely above average. We discussed the left side of the booth right here and then we also talked about the right side of the booth so the right side you can see it in the background here it just has that single tiered riser but it's almost the width of the table itself so it's kind of nice that it provides a decent consistent verticality on that side and then on the corners of the main table that's where we get like our big risers and then it kind of continues on over here so you've got really nice variations going on you have made use of the front of the tables and good choice by the way we'll touch on this later but good choice on your colors and textures because since you are using a lot of the front of the table it's nice to see that you went with safe solid colors because your items are already let's just call them crazy colors (laughs) right like you've got a lot going on with the colors and if you had some kind of texture at the booth it would be incredibly hard to focus on these items okay so great job with that not only utilizing all your space but in again in the way that you did it very very smart so again verticality I don't have too much to say except for maybe just a small, like don't go crazy with this front space because you don't need to, but just something, a little something to get this back part up a little bit. Maybe even just like the height of like this skull. I'm talking like four or five inches just to bring it up a touch for We're kind of just focusing on the aesthetic here to make it a little bit more interesting on the front end. And again, if you decide to go with that runner, that's really, really going to help too. Okay, so just really subtle touches on this front table. Otherwise, all your vertical space is absolutely excellent. Great job turning the wood crates so that you've got a little bit of extra usage on these parts right here. So now let's roll into colors, contrast, and texture. On the left and the right table, we have the black stretched tablecloths. They look, they look absolutely excellent. However, on this main table, we have a little bit of an issue with the tablecloth. Okay, so a couple of things. Not only does it not stretch all the way, so that's kind of like, you know, one check mark, but 
it's also a very, very light color. And I think your items being as vibrant as they are, I think they look much, much better against the black tablecloth than they do against this, you know, kind of tan one. So perhaps you were only expecting to have two tables at this event and you were able to get a third. Sometimes that happens with vendors at crafters where sometimes the organizer will just have like an extra table laying around or they'll just say, Hey, does anybody need a table? Feel free to take one. Or sometimes this happens too, where your next door neighbor that you were supposed to have another vendor either cancels or doesn't show up. And the vendor kind of, I'm sorry, the organizer sort of needs to fill that space in. So there's not a gap. So sometimes vendors are able to like absorb bonus space. Sometimes that happens. Anyways, what I'm trying to say is that this could be a situation where maybe there was like unexpected space. If that wasn't the case, then you definitely want to have a consistent tablecloth set up, okay? Either way, what I would do as a vendor, really like regardless of what kind of craft or venue you are, is invest in like an extra tablecloth or two and just keep that with you. You want to bring with you to every craft fair sort of like an emergency kit, okay? And that has extras of things that you might need. Maybe something gets damaged at an event and it needs to be repaired. Or maybe something just straight up needs to be replaced entirely. You want to have like uh, some spare parts basically ready to go. And that's what I would recommend with this situation right here, okay? Because the black stretch tablecloths look really, really good. And I think that it would have been nice to have that on the front side as well. Not only, again, not only for the aesthetic, just how it looks, but I think it does serve, it just does better justice to showing off your items. Otherwise, in this colors, contrast, and texture category, I really love the use of solid colors, again, for the reasons we talked about already, because there's already so many colors in your items, it's nice just to see solid colors to keep the background calm. You really, really need to keep the background calm with items like these that are just such a wide variety of shapes and sizes. And, you know, even like this dragon right here, it has so much of its own texturing on it that if there was other texturing on like the cloth behind it, it would be so hard to see the detail of this. But since you have a solid background, it's it's nice. It stands out and you get to see all that detail in the product, okay? So you don't want to lose all those little minute details in the items by making the backgrounds busy. You want to keep the background simple so that the items themselves are what's standing out. So great job with all that all the way around. And you did provide a little bit of flair on your side tables. So you have the black tablecloth, but then by making it a little bit interesting, you have this table runner that's kind of frayed on the edges. It has like this little fraying on the fabric. That's nice. You know, it's just enough to do something subtle to keep it interesting, to inject a little bit of personality into the booth. Like, you know, put your own stamp on it besides just a black tablecloth. And yet it doesn't take away anything from the items and the presentation of the items. So that's something I wanted to point out during this particular category is that you did a really, really nice job on the side tables. And I would just consider bringing that out to the front table. Now, again, with that front table, okay, we have the runners over here, right? So we have the runners kind of running the long way on the table. Now that's something I would not do the long way long way on the front table. I would keep that one plain black, particularly if you do decide to go with that marketing runner in the front, okay? Because that's going to provide a little bit of breakup in that solid black anyways. And I think doing a vertical runner down the long length of the table would just kind of be overkill and not really needed. Okay, so now let's talk about the strength of theme. Again, one of the stronger elements of this booth because all items are, you know, the 3D printed figures and statues and all those other items. Okay, so we're definitely just sticking within this realm. And within the realm, there is a wide variety. Okay, so that's to me one of the signs of a strong vendor is that they have found their identity and they're really pushing it. So I like to see that at booths where 
they're they're in that niche they're in that genre and uh, they're just really really pushing how far they can take it but they are staying within it there is an identity still and it's not getting lost so great job with that i like all the different wide variety here there's elements that are kind of spooky there's elements that are definitely playful and whimsical um, there's something for, there's definitely something for adults and there's definitely something for kids, you know? So it's really cool to see the appeal and how many demographics can possibly be covered with these items. Okay. So that's something to think about when you're crafting your works is, am I cornering the demographic like too specifically? Is this getting too specific where, it takes a really, really certain person to appeal to at a craft fair in order to even hope to spark their interest. Or do you have a pretty good shot, like you're casting a pretty wide net? So again, something to consider as a craft fair vendor. Here at this booth, the strength of the theme is absolutely fantastic. So really not a whole lot to touch on in this category. Just keep having fun, keep creating uh, stuff that you know speaks to you and it's likely going to attract kids all the way to older adults. So great job with this. All right. So now let's talk about accessibility. And when I mention accessibility, basically what I'm talking about is a few different things. One, how easy is it to people to access the booth and do so in a safe manner? And then how close do people need to be to the booth in order to tell what's going on? So let's touch on that element first. I think from a decent distance, you can pretty much see what's going on. One reason for this is because of the strength in the vertical element of your booth. You're, you're putting items up high and you've put large items up high. Okay, so that part is very smart too. Sometimes you'll see people go vertical, but then they'll have kind of like rotating stands or rotating displays that have hooks and maybe it has like smaller keychains or smaller magnets or stickers and it's it's still kind of hard to see like from a distance but if you go vertical and if you put large items up vertical you're gonna see that from a distance as a shopper okay so that's again very very well done and you're thinking ahead you're thinking like a shopper and that's great that's only going to benefit you so that part of the accessibility portion of your booth is great now let's talk about can people move around your booth in a safe manner so let me look at the different views to see if there's a photo that's kind of pulled out a bit or if we're in tight on every shot yeah we're kind of in tight on every angle here just as far as the way the photo was taken but what i'll tell you is that with these black stretch tablecloths you're not going to have to worry about the tripping issue where people have the more conventional tablecloths that hang down. And sometimes you'll see vendors put these on where they're too far tugged forward towards the shopper and they kind of roll up by their feet. That's where you can possibly have a tripping hazard. And that's no good, of course. But with these black stretch tablecloths, you do not have to worry about that. Okay, so I can tell you right now that that is not an issue. And since these are sort of transparent, you can look under here and you can tell that there's not anything sticking out under here, okay? You can kind of see the, the arch of the tablecloth as it's stretching underneath and there's not anything poking out, okay? So that is another good sign to eliminate tripping hazards and possible tripping hazards. And sometimes even in the way that you design your booth layout, that can also determine if you're you know, more or less likely to experience accessibility issues for your shoppers. So for example, what I'm talking about here is this is a walk around booth, okay? So the shoppers do not walk into the booth, they just walk around it. Now, when you have a booth that's inverted, so say for example, this table here with the light tablecloth was pushed in against this wall and the vendors maybe like we're standing over here and you walked into the booth well then you have to make sure that all that floor splay <laughs> for oh my goodness floor space is clear 
Okay, so there's no electrical cords running through. There's no, you know, dollies or carts or handles or anything like that sticking out that people can trip on. But when you have a walk around booth like this, you're essentially guaranteeing that there's going to be nice walkability for the shoppers. And you're not going to have to worry about too many tripping hazards and elements that are a safety hazard. Okay, that's what this is basically boiling down to is any kind of a safety hazard for the shoppers that are close to your booth. So all around, I want to say that accessibility, again, you're doing a wonderful job with this portion of the booth and this you know portion of the booth review. And just keep doing what you're doing. It seems like just from the, the vibe that I'm getting so far in the displays and the pricing and the different elements that we've talked about, the verticality, you guys are thinking ahead and you're thinking like shoppers. And that's very, very important to consider it from their experience. And sometimes as vendors, we get caught up in our own vision of everything and it's like you know how do i want this like set up and what would look cool and sometimes we get sucked into like what's like the best way to show off like a product or whatever and we get a little bit too far away from just focusing on the shopper experience the visitor experience and if you want to make sales and if you want to attract people and you want to get people coming up to your booth and checking out your stuff you have to think like them you have to think about what would appeal to you if you were shopping and walking through a craft fair okay so no matter what kind of booth you have no matter what kind of crafts you work on always keep that part in mind and that is going to give you a leg up on a good portion of vendors that are out there that do get kind of sucked into the the vendor mindset so with that being said accessibility again really really wonderful at this booth all right, so now let's talk about general use of space. Very good. There's not a whole lot of opportunity to improve on this portion of the booth. And if anything, I would start to look at possibly what your best sellers are and maybe just start to analyze what isn't selling well or perhaps at all. Okay, so I know you guys said that you have a pretty busy booth and especially the way that you book your events where you make sure that there's not a lot of competition and things like that. That's very good, you know, but as far as trying to absorb everything that's happening at the booth, there is a lot to look at, you know, so if there are any items that aren't moving at all, so rather than dedicating very valuable real estate to items that perhaps aren't moving that well, I would just focus on what is selling well and uh, have a little bit more breathability at the booth. I think that might help. And we did talk about possibly incorporating a few additional things that aren't in the booth already. So we talked about your Etsy sign. We talked about maybe the table runner, just a couple of little things that could be added to the booth. Okay. So with additions, generally come subtractions and you don't want to get it to the point where everything is just kind of stuffed into the booth and it's getting more and more packed in. So try to cut out anything that's not moving at all. And I think that's actually going to benefit you more than harm you. Otherwise, general use of space is really good. Again, we touched on the usage of the displays and the various heights and the various alternate displays that are mixed in here too. Okay, so we have like this little stand right here. We have sort of like this tree-shaped one we talked about, a couple of the baskets over here. There's enough variety and other elements mixed in that break up the aesthetic and break up any kind of monotony and repetition that might be occurring at the booth and predictability and throws a little bit of character in there. But on top of that, again, it's serving that purpose. Okay. So it's kind of containing items that are meant to be contained and separated from the other parts of the booth. Okay. So multi-purpose, um, visual and keeping things separate from one another. Finally, let's talk about the eye test. The eye test is the one or two seconds that a shopper is walking by and what are you doing as a vendor to get them to stop and check out your booth? So I would say that this is a pretty good strength at the booth because not only are the items very colorful, there's a wide variety of sizes and shapes and the, the vibrancy in them, but 
there's also, again, the products that appeal to different demographics and different ages and all of that. So I think that already is a big strength. Going to the black tablecloth, I think is going to be a massive, massive help for this first table here, this front outward facing table, because the sides look so good that this one up against these two, it, it feels like it's kind of fallen behind just because of the fact that these two other ones show so well. So let's go ahead and summarize the things that you're doing really well and the things that maybe there's some room for improvement. So let's touch on, let's touch on the good first. So the side tables with the black tablecloth and those kind of gray runners, they're beautiful. I really like the color combination, kind of like that muted blue gray look. I think it just looks really sharp and just the slight fraying there or whatever, like, you know, texture that is just gives it enough character and personality to give it an interesting look. So these side tables are tremendous in the way that they're uh, set up throughout the booth. There's great height and stacking on the side tables. Okay. So we talked about the, the various usages of these displays and going vertical, but going vertical with a purpose. Okay. So that's very, very important too. not going tall just to go tall, but doing it in a way that's very intelligent. So that is definitely a highlight of the booth. The pricing, I think, is also another highlight of the booth. It's very well done, and it's not taking up a lot of the room, okay? So sometimes you see booths where the pricing, maybe there's like a pricing sign or like a big, almost like a menu board sometimes people will have. That takes up a lot of room, you know, and it takes up also a lot of focus. All right. So you want the pricing to be clear, but by no means do you want the pricing to be like the star of the show. We always want the products to do that. So I think you found like a nice sweet spot here where you're doing what needs to be done with the pricing, whether there's a sticker on the bottom of the product or there's an individual tag or there's a little small pricing sign like we saw on the left side here, right? Over here, here, and here. It's very well done where it's finding that sweet spot between minimalistic, but also clear. Okay. So great job here. The business card handout and display, I think is rather, rather nice. It's something a little bit different. And this helps to give the booth some character, some personality and something that you don't always see. So I like the little picture frame and this approach with marketing and, you know, small form marketing, like a business card or a handout. Okay. So I think that's really cool. I think that's uh, one of the highlights of the booth is it's subtle, you know, it, it like a, uh, a nice stamp on a booth doesn't need to be loud and boisterous. It can be something so small and subtle like this, where you're doing it your own way. And it's just very neat, you know, and it, it kind of, separates you from the rest of the pack. So I, I like this portion of the booth. Now, one thing I want to touch on as well as a positive, at least for me, was the communication that I've had with uh, Todd. And I think, you know, he, he's been very polite and he's had a, a nice demeanor this entire time. And I just want to say that 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 matters. You know, that definitely matters when it comes to being a vendor, being a craft fair vendor. And it's not just the six or seven hours that the show is on. You know, it, it's how you communicate with your peers. It's how you communicate with the organizer and anybody that you might encounter when you're representing your business. And I think that that, that definitely matters. So I wanted to point that out that the vendors that just are very polite and, you know, have like a, just sense of courtesy that goes a long way. You know, I think, I think people really appreciate that. And there's something about craft fairs where I think for the most part that that is a practice that's executed very well, you know? And I think that's one of the big perks of going to a craft fair when you meet the artist is that 
you know, you get that personal experience. And so that's, that's just something I wanted to mention during this review and um, something I definitely appreciated. So thank you for that. Another positive note on this particular booth is the great product variety. So we talked about not only the different price points. Okay. So that's very important, but just the, the variety in the products alone is tremendous at this booth. But yet again, it's staying within that 3d printed articulated figure and statue realm. So great job there in trying to make something for everybody, but staying within your own identity. That's, it's not always easy to do, you know, and it's very easy to kind of just be tempted to leap outside of that, to be like, Oh, I want to, I think this will attract this type of person, but then, you know, maybe you're kind of losing that identity in your booth. So always keep this in the back of your mind vendors that it's, it is a bit of a balancing act, but if you can pull it off and kind of push the boundaries, but stay within your identity, that's what you want to be doing. So now let's talk a little bit on possible improvements at the booth. So first of all, the, the, the front tablecloth should always cover the entire table. You should never have any of the bare table showing. So that's pre, you know pretty easy fix right there. And one thing that you can do is insert a little bit of lighting into the wooden crates because the inside of them is a little bit dark and especially the items that you've placed inside of the crates that are dark, that's a little bit tough to see. Okay. So I would do one of two things here. If you can't get, you know, little lighting and, and very, very subtle, you don't need a lot. You don't need like a, you know, like a deer shining light, <laughs> um, so, you know, glaring in there or anything like that. But they have those little electronic tea lights that you can stick up on top. Or sometimes people will do just a little mini or minor string of lights that can go through there. Otherwise, as a last resort, you could put one of the very bright versions of this item on the inside and then have the dark ones outside of it. Okay, so that's another way of alleviating that light and dark issue is like, see this skull right here, it shows pretty dang well inside of that crate, but then this item here, it's, it's detail is a little bit lost. This one here would probably look a lot better inside of it, okay? so. If you don't go with lighting, just think about like which products you're putting in there so that they contrast really well with a dark background. Okay, so that's one thing to think about. We did mention a very, very slight riser on the main table just to provide a little bit of a breakup in all of the table items. Okay, so use it, utilizing the table for some of the stuff, yeah, that's okay, you know, but when it gets to be a very large portion of the table is just items set down on it, that's when you kind of want to break it up. But you don't want to lose the visibility that you have as a vendor, okay? So if if you guys are over here, you don't want to go too high with a display where, you know, now you're kind of lost, okay? So I'm, I'm talking very, very subtle riser right here. And then we also did mention the table runner with the business name, I think would look very, very nice up front and kind of break up like the solid color and give your business name some justified presence. So I think that would be very nice. And if you go with a solid tablecloth here, I would go with the black one again, because your items are mostly light. And I think that they show better against the black than they would against a light colored main tablecloth. And then finally, another thing that we talked about was adding the signage for accepted payments, whatever kind of payment types that you accept, and then adding a sign for your Etsy shop to help promote that and grow that. So these are just some of the things to keep in mind. I hope that the booth review helped you out and it was a pleasure to do this. I, I like the 3D printed booths and um, I think that they're very fun, add a, lot of, add a lot of character to you know a craft fair where sometimes you can see a lot of the same type of stuff and this these types of products are pretty pretty whimsical and out there and adventurous. So. Uh, I think it adds a lot of flavor to the show. So Todd and Michelle, thank you so much for um, allowing me to show your booth to the world and to give you a booth review. If you're interested in getting your booth reviewed, all it takes is a channel membership. And you can learn more about that by clicking the join button below. And there's a couple of different tiers that I offer 
for channel members. And you get a lot of different perks with them, one of them being a booth review. You can also submit questions for the channel member Q&A videos. You get access to all printable resource guides that I normally just sell on Etsy, so you get those for free. Uh, you can connect on my website. I'll list you on my website as a supporter and give you member shout outs on YouTube on occasion. So there's a lot of different perks, many more that I have not mentioned. And I just appreciate all the channel members. It means a lot to get the support for this channel to kind of keep things up and running. So this was episode 32 in the Craft Fair Booth Review Series. To check out all the other booth reviews, click on this playlist above. Please consider liking and subscribing. And thank you so much for watching.